So it is the morning, the morning after really, uh, a, a party of a life well lived and I thought that's our house, I grew up in, which you saw actually on another video, I thought we'll go for a little drive uh, with dad and there we are. Uh, and this is a, a we're not going in that by the way. No we're not going, it's only a one seater so it shows how close the racing's been to my heart but this is a, a pram for ambulator and every year on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. Um, we have this uh, race around the village between the three pubs. It's about two miles, and in fact, I never competed in it. Justin did it. I did it. And Sebastian just did it with his cousin. He's my brother. That's right. <laughs> and he did it in there. And he did it in this. And but look at the bloody wheel. I said to him, I said, don't take the corners too tight. And look at him. Well, so he's, a ba he's a heavy bastard. He's like well, he was pushing. 200 pounds. He was pushing. Oh, was he? He had to drink the three pints of beer, which he found a bit tricky. But you can see it's just... And I tell him, I said, don't forget, it's never over till it's over. <laughs> and it's so hilarious because yeah, he comes yeah. screaming in and he took five people on the last sort of 300 yards running like a lunatic after two yeah. miles and drunk three pints of bitter. And as he came round, he actually caught the curb going round the last bend. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, we took them all and then he had to carry it <laughs> on the front wheels like this. <laughs> See, there is proof that men will drive and race anything. Something and there's yeah. the other thing we used to race a yes. little bit. There's our motorbikes, little motorbikes, and, so and Justin had one, I had another. Oh, and there's the red, the Porsche, the Carrera GTS under there, which you know about because you all saw that before. Um, That's with your it. new car cover, Dad, isn't it lovely? Nice. Yeah, smart, isn't it? I like that. Okay, and there is the pro. We get, I thought we'll go for a post birthday party drive. And we'll work out where we go. Okay. Well, you want me to get it out? Yeah, you should get it out. I'm still scared about dinging your cars. <laughs> so, so am I. So. So That's uh, the studio up there where I did some of my best work as a teenager. I used to draw, life draw, young fillies. <coughs> and I'd convince them to go up. This is a better story. Shouting and screaming to school, probably. Probably. <laughs> we used to we used to leave out of this driveway and and blast it, shouting and screaming to school. Any happy walkers? No, there aren't any. This isn't in the handbook of how to be a, a yeah. road driver putting a seatbelt on it as you go out the road. Well, IMSA did notice me do this during a race, <coughs> during the race at Sebring one year when I did the seatbelts to start the car up out on the track. Uh, they, I, went, I got back in the car when I finally started it and drove back to the pits going down the back straight at Sebring and I was doing up my seatbelts. After the race I was summoned into the, into the clerk of the courses office and said, you were seen to be doing up your seatbelts going down the back straight at 150 miles an hour, holding the steering wheel with your knees. And I said, well, how else do I do the belts up? And they said, yes, but we have it on film. And because I hadn't had, had cameras in the car. Oh, <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> There's because our old house where we grew up. Yeah. Church farm. And their wasting shop was down there. We built the first Lotus 7. That was the most amazing thing about your party, Dad. Actually, how do you feel? What did you think? I didn't know if you were going to make the first 10 minutes. We actually said, <laughs> I said, if you make the first 10 seconds, you don't have a heart attack. No, I know. Um, it'll be a good party. It was very good. Nothing faltered in the sort of the heart department, but I have to admit, I was totally and utterly stunned. And I've never been stunned in my life before like that. I mean, it was, overall, it was the most wonderful evening ever spent in my life because it was stunning in the fact that I didn't know it was even happening. You know, as, as you said, once I walked in there and got over the shop, and it wasn't a group photograph, it was actually... Everybody went in. Everybody started to sing. And then, 
you and Sebastian came out from behind those dancing girls. Dancing girls, which I'm surprised you left them really for me, but you did that once in your life. We have abused this road over our child over the last yep, 40 years. We have just a little bit. The road knows me well. And then I say to see everybody there, I mean, I, you don't know where to start, but at the end of the day, all I can say is that every, it seemed that everybody from my racing life and my life was there. Then it was just fantastic. I mean, it was just like all my friends in one room. It, no, it was, it was incredible as everyone was turning up. People that I haven't seen, people whose faces were part of my childhood, are all turning up. Like Michael, as you say, Michael, who, I mean, literally, has, he's been around your racing as long as ever, yep. as anyone, and not, not changed a bit. No. John Penfold. And it was the beginning. I mean, without John, I would probably never gone racing, though somebody else might have slipped along at some point yeah. and said, come on, let's do some racing, because I did, had got the impression dear old Jim Russell was racing school that I had a talent somewhere in parts away and um, you know I did nothing because I didn't have the guts and the whatever to get on and do it but John Penfold came to sell me that far machinery on the yeah. farm and from that we learned we had common interests and let's build a car together so we built for the Amazing. won the first race of Goodwood that I did the first race of my life now I thought I thought to have a celebration at 75 to have all those people, to have that whole history, and people like Dario and Marino to yeah. turn up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, it's amazing. Quite remarkable. There's such, yeah, such a cross section. I mean, you know, it's like name dropping about stars. But you know, Jackie Oliver was there. Who yeah. I raced in Formula Three, Formula Two, Formula One, and then he won Le Mans, and we raced against each other in the World Cha Well, we raced against in the 917 yeah. Porsches. So, you know, it was amazing that we were all together. And, um, and, and, then who, and then Tom Christensen. I mean, Tom has become a, such a great friend. And it's so strange. We all have such respect in each other's careers. Yeah. And, you know, you being there as well with your career. And I, I suddenly thought it's pretty Andy Wallace was up there. Yeah, the Andy would have. You know. Andy would have. Think of all the people that could have been there last night. Yeah. Oh, who yeah. would that have been for you? If you look back, people that you wouldn't have believed if you'd been at their 75th. Well, Al Holborn. Is one that I've always admired so much, and just such I'm going to have to go by here. Yeah, sorry, everybody. But what a move! Forty mile an hour speed limit. This, this film is speeded up, by the it way. It is sped up. Yeah, I'm we would not, never break the speed I'm limit. I'm not doing eighty, and I overtake in the forty. But uh, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Um, well, certainly Al, and of course, I fell off. For example, he wouldn't have come. But I'd love to have had Bob Wallet there. Yeah. And uh, uh, Rolf Stomlin there, and Joe Siffert there, and Pedro, I mean, God, it's terrible, isn't it? Going back over the and Dave Purley, you know, I know, who was such an, an, such, I wouldn't say left an impression on my life. Well, I think he did. He, he left an impression on mine. Yeah, well, he would on yours. Yeah. And it didn't do much good, really, did it? No. But, um, but it was more but, to do with girls. Yes, exactly. Mine, mine was to do just with his attitude. And then Steve O'Rourke, you know, the man from Big Floyd, who brought me back in in the end of 79 when I was about to quit. We drove the M1s and from then I went to Porsche and started my sort of really heady sort of Porsche career. So, you know, there were so many people that would have been amazing to have been there. Even my dear old dad would have enjoyed it, wouldn't yeah. he? Oh. I mean, he died at this age, dad, so. Yeah. God, isn't that sobering? It is so. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. It is actually, yeah. But I remember it was just very important. I came back from winning the World Championship in 1986. 86. Yes, it was. 86, yes. And I came back and he, you know, was very ill with uh, Alzheimer's. And um, I went to see him at home in his um, at Farnham, just up the road here in the, in the country. And I remember when I said, guess what, Dad, I won the World Championship today. And he, he just smiled and that was it. And I, I knew he knew what I was yeah. talking about. It's really uncanny. Yeah, he didn't talk and didn't do anything else, but he just mm. smiled when I said it. As, and, you know, so that was pretty special. Yeah. Well, more than special, it was yeah. a, a lifelong memory, of course. And, oh, that looks close. Mm. Look at that Excuse my French, everybody. This is the most dangerous roundabout. The most dangerous roundabout this, ever. Yeah. Um, this is, of course, where everybody... Now, that one... Go! He's got, I am, thank you. Yeah, I there you go. The second car didn't indicate. It works very well, the roundabout system, if you don't get hit. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's a uh, wheel spin. Woohoo! This is Dad's Ferrari 550 that was 
owned by David Mills, another man that should have been there. Well, there you go, yeah. yeah. You know, his manager and dad now has it. I can't believe, as we're heading up through Chidester, how when you're here for it, and it's not good with weekend, yeah. how this area has suddenly become, since I was a kid, such a mecca for car people. I know. Who would have thought that? Well, it's strange, isn't it? Because you've got to remember that I knew Goodwood when it was Goodwood, mm. you know, when it was the original track. I don't remember much of it, but I mean, the closest I could get to a racing car was to be a marshal at Goodwood through Bond the Motor yeah. Club and Chichester Motor Club. So that's how I got to be close to cars, even though I was sitting behind a bale of straw, sort of hiding, waving my blue and yellow flags yeah. when necessary. And um, little realizing, well, knowing that Goodwood was going to close in 66, which really was my second year of racing, I'm going to have to try and get this left lane here. That truck that big effing truck is not like it. Let him go in the back of that yeah, Civic. Beautiful up here on the downs. We're coming up to the main entrance of Goodwood Racetrack now where we've gone up here for a thousand years. And I'm going to endeavour to go in. I'm actually up here on a two day event later this week. But I'll see if we can get in unless the, the barrier is shut. But um, it was going to look. Depends if they like me enough to let me This in. is where Dad did his first ever car race. And walk and down through this tunnel was somewhere that I thought I dreamt that one day I'd be able to drive through here. And here I am driving through the tunnel under the racetrack at the very, very incredibly famous Goodwood. And then of course Goodwood had their headquarters here and the race all the race stuff is run from here. They have the airport wow. helicopters, helicopters landing over in front of us. And those are the offices. And then over here it's a bit of a quiet day today, isn't it? Wow. Look how uh, they've done all this. Yeah, the look, this is for the this is for the revival. That's the motor show, and that's where it's, so there's a main hall, a big restaurant yeah. in there where we eat. And this, of course, is um, I'll take you up to. Let's just go we, towards the yeah. We can go towards, go up the, towards the end here. And um, how cool to come in here. Yeah. It's still remnants of the revival stuff around. Oh yeah, well that's the new that's the new flying club on the right. The, Lord March has just built an amazing. Wow, place. look at that. Look at that, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Look and there's some of the school planes outside. Of course. That's what I learned to fly in. You spun the car, nice you spun the plane. Dad on. spun the plane on landing. on landing here at Goodwood. Yeah, I did, really. And that it, this, can you imagine that this is the marshalling area at Goodwood? This is actually where everybody that's ever done a race at Goodwood comes in here and he sits here in the line, the slowest ones at this end. The fastest ones over here, the man on pole position. And this is So this is where you were, all those photographs of you. 1964, 13th of March, and I was didn't know where I was, maybe I was about eight because it wasn't official. There wasn't a practice by times. And this is where you sit and the adrenaline just courses through your yeah. veins as you sit here waiting Look to go that. out and then the siren goes and uh, you know you've got one minute to go and then the gates open and then you, it's unbelievable. It's like running through into the uh, you know to into fight the, the stadium, line. Yeah. the stadium, you know. And there's the old, that's the old original concrete. That's the old flying school. That flying school used to be in there. Which, I know, remember that as a kid. Is the clerk of the course is often where I was summoned to a couple of times. And this um, is where I first, um, I you what were you testing the day I broke my arm here? So I was running around here, Dad was doing like a driving day, test day. I was 12, 11, 10, and I was running over one of these fences. Little low. One yeah. of the little fences, and I yeah. wee jumped over it, and it was like a six foot drop the other side, and my, yeah. and my wrist was hanging out of, you know, yeah. it right. was disgusting. Right. I went up to him, and Dad, you were in um, a Porsche, and we got uh, to St. Richard's Hospital, where I had a standing account, in, in like... <laughs> In like two and a half minutes. Pretty quickly. I remember that one it's song not far was far away. It's only about five. I know. Miles. And then um, there was that. And then do you remember when we had the nine? You had your Rothmans nine five six, and I was doing my testing my Ray. Mm. Yeah. And oh, right. um, I'd only just started doing Formula Ford, and then I got to drive his nine five six. Melanie drove your Formula Ford. And she drove my Formula Ford. Incredible, Mike Hawthorne over there. Oh look, Isn't that incredible. Anyway, th this is Goodwood, eh? and. Uh, do not even know we're here, uh, which is wonderful to have that sort of security in Britain. Yeah, you think everywhere's got under lock and key. Um, I'm, <coughs> sure, I'm sure they wouldn't mind, but um, I feel that we should have asked. What to drive even in? Yeah, to, well, sort of, but you 
maybe. I was with Lord. You're Derek Bell. He came to my party the other day. He came day. to the party. We, we met the right. boss. We met the landowner. No, who would that be? He was the head of the BA, a very famous man. Not Douglas Bader. It is Douglas Bader, it isn't is. it? Look, he's got a flying yeah. Yeah, but he has over there. He's got legs, bless him. No, I don't think so. He's one Douglas Bader obviously didn't have legs then. So we better look into that. I'll tell you what, who that is later. So but Dad, we mentioned it on Saturday night in my little speech. But when you got going, you didn't know it was a good career, did you? Oh no. You had no clue it was anything really. No, well I think you put it very, very, very well. We didn't do it as a career. We did it because we just wanted. We were so lucky to get the chance to race. When you started racing, Dad, I'm sure at Goodwood on that little day in 1960. What year were they? 64. There weren't exactly a lot of pretty girls probably at Goodwood that year, no, were there? No, no. When I did you first really realise that pretty girls like racing car drivers? Um, oh, I, yeah, I don't know, just... <laughs> um, I, I, I never thought of it when that was, but I remember it was all... I, I remember when I got into Formula 2 and uh, I was sort of getting into the international arena that um, the girls were turned on by racing drivers because it was rather like a bullfighter going out to the bull ring. And um, they, I think they realised the excitement, how exciting a man was if he took his life to those sort of edges. And not because we were trying, we were trying not to get killed, but we just liked driving racing cars and we just had certain skills and some of us were better than others. Yeah. And um, I think that was when and the girls and it it happens, obviously, we've seen it with pop stars and actors and every sportsman in the world. But ours had that extra edge and that there was the danger factor. Yeah. And, but, um, you know, there it, it was always a lot of colour. It's and, a good uh, thing. we were all for it. Sorry, I'm trying to miss the whole thing. <coughs> Everyone was for it. Yeah. I mean, think about the 60s, the technology of cars, the travel, the, the pill, yes. rock and roll. Yeah, that's right. And race cars. What's that saying about... Days when what was it? What Sex was, was safe and racing was dangerous. That's right. How fun! Wow, Dad, I can't believe that was. Everyone turned up for your 75th. Everyone, I think you're going to live another 25. <laughs> I hope so. I'd like to. The way I feel on that, I'll be yes. Yeah, you're not going to have any regrets, Dad. Oh no, 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 exactly. Not one. This is the lane back to our house now. Yeah. Good wooden back, Dad. Yeah, there you go. Well, thanks, GB. Yeah. Obviously, thanks for coming uh, all the way over for the party. It was amazing. Yeah. Always quite emotional coming home. It has to be, isn't it? When you grew up here, and you used to tear across the farm. With your Motorbikes and bikes. girls and painting and tennis right. and what a great life. Yeah. Thanks. Oh well. Thank you. Back to America. Oh, Dad, I got one more thing. Can you get me um, an upgrade? How the hell can I do that? <laughs> I knew you'd say that.